Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I was just taking a look at the activities section and seeing what I hadn't done before, which is quite a lot of things. I haven't tried the discovery flights or flight train. Well, I did the flight training, but then they reset it. And there's uh, landing challenges. Some of them I haven't done, but mo mainly it's 39% because I've only gotten Bs on some. I haven't touched the bush trips. I haven't touched the arena air races. I did do the Maverick activities, but it's 59% because I got Bs. But then I noticed the custom content section. And I wonder what was there. And it turns out that the Savoia Marchetti S55 adds some what they call bush trips, but they're not really bush trips. They're proper uh, proper flights. And there, there are a few other things. Uh, this, I think, was added by another mod. And then there's some other landing challenges down here. Uh, uh, I think it's the same mod that added this National Park uh, Discovery thing. And also these uh, three landing challenges so yeah i think that was a freeware one by the way uh, malawi if you look up malawi in uh, flightsim.to you might get those but then there's this savoia marchetti these four flights and to my surprise they're they're like the real things which means they're really long uh so this one is from genoa to sao paulo this the famous flight that they did uh with it uh it was crossing the atlantic and so they've got the whole story here at length, but it's 5,163 nautical miles and takes 51 hours because it basically goes 100 nautical mile, uh, knots, 100 knots. So yeah, that is a long flight and quite an adventure if anybody were to want to undertake that. But they've got it all sort of sorted out for you uh, where your landing locations are. And I guess these little blue stripes are indicating where you're going to be landing. Uh, I say you because I don't have the time to do, uh, I mean, maybe if if it was the right day, I could do an eight hour flight, but the 14 hour flight is probably pushing it. <laughs> so, but they aren't all unreasonable. Most of them are unreasonable. This one is uh, five hours, three hours, five hours. This is a nine hour and 51 minute one. And then, so that's a bunch of legs going 4,697 nautical miles with an expected duration of 37 hours. Uh, but anyway, those flights are long, and there's a lot of them. This one uh, from Chicago to Rome uh, seems also, I mean, the 11 hours is unavoidable there. But, but there is a nicer one here, Eastern Mediterranean Cruise. This one's not so bad. Um, it's got 2 hours 26 minutes, 2 hours 46 minutes, and 2 hours 27 minutes. It's only a thousand nautical miles basically, and 3 legs. So I have decided that I will try this. After all, I don't have... Oh, and another reason I guess that these are quicker is because it's the X version. I didn't notice that. So only the first one is the original version, the S55. These three are all the X version, and that's why they're faster. So I haven't actually seen the cockpit of the X version, so I might as well try it out. I don't know what else to do with i mean i can probably figure out something else to do with the s55 but if they're gonna give me this i might as well see how it goes so from orbitello to istanbul the uh, first flight is from orbitello to toronto and the second from toronto to athens and the third from athens to istanbul sounds good to me frankly uh so i don't know why they didn't make a bigger deal of this i didn't know about this it was just because i was randomly poking around that i found it so Okay, now the other uh, historical planes, the local legends, I don't know that they had flights like this, like the J-52 didn't come with one. So, yeah, I wonder if uh, the Dornier seaplane actually came with some flights like this, I don't know. That might make it interesting. So that's our route, it looks like. I like that they've tried to keep it a lot of it over land that's gonna even though it's a seaplane uh, but that's more scenic of course so this is very different it's got a it's got a top to it it's not like a boat it looks like we're going with a stopwatch but we also have the map there okay I'll shrink the nav log we've even got a GPS why do I even need the v VFR map if I got a GPS thing Let's take a look outside. So yeah, not quite as uh, interesting as the straight up S55, this S55X, but it's got more power. 
All right. And I'll have to figure out where the lights are, but let's go before I crash into the opposite shore. Well, we can go up. Aside from the GPS, it looks like the real thing. I wonder if I can hide the GPS. It looks like it's pretty much integrated. Okay, so heading 116. All right, well, we're basically right on that. Completing a bush trip without using the get me back on track feature will award an achievement for that particular activity. Well, then get rid of the GPS. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I will recognize Rome when I get there. So I'm not too worried about being off track. Naples, Toronto. Yeah, I basically know the way. I don't anticipate getting off track here. Well, let's take a look outside. I also didn't need the HUD instruments. I usually have them off nowadays. Hmm. I guess that's part of the, the challenge has them up permanently. So that's where we took off from. I recognize that area. That That's that little strip the the town that's on that little strip, that's what Orvatillo is. Now I remember. So this first leg and all the way up to Naples basically parallels the flight I did uh, as a sort of initial tour after the Italy update. It's strange but I still don't know where the speedometer is. I mean, aside from on the GPS, of course. We've got atmospheres over there. We've got the altimeter. I don't know what that is. Maybe in kilometers per hour, this one over here. I think that's the vertical speed indicator, that one. Interesting looking plane, still. Certainly more robust looking than the baseline S55. Panel lights. Panel lights, yes. Oh, okay, there we go. Well, we're basically level and going 127 knots ground speed now. Considering the duration of our flight, I don't think it was necessary to load it up with so much fuel, but they did that. Don't know why the estimated time en route is seven hours. Is that the entire thing, including the other two flights? Maybe. Maybe it's all plotted in there. Uh, no, there's the moon. We can still see the engines above us. That's good. We've got sort of a stowage area here. Well, we are approaching Rome. I can see some of the buildings over there. It's a little bit hard with the glare of the sun, but... We see the airport to our right. That's, uh... That's a guarantee right there. Well, there's a road underneath us, and they say all roads lead to Rome, so... <laughs> well, not quite, but I see it over there. Well, there's that stadium over there. Sort of hidden by the hill. Okay. So then we can turn... To the east or even further south. Very nice looking. 
Oh, there's... <laughs> I was looking for it. Uh, there's the Vatican and all. What's that? I'm trying to find the Colosseum. Okay, there's the Colosseum. It's got a tree growing in it. That's not good. Alright, so that has officially been Rome. Okay, well, let's set the timer again. For Naples estimated time, 49 minutes, it says. Let me ignore the GPS. <laughs> and look here. Okay, the classic compass says 124. Oh, wait, it's sort of readjusted. Continue going in that direction. Okay, so status report. I'm basically staying along the coast, even though I should be further inland. But the coastal view is nice, and this is a seaplane. And so, this is a familiar sort of coastline right here, but I forget exactly where we are. And darn it, I already reeled against the presence of GPS. I'm not going to use any artificial map to find out. But we are here, if you recognize that particular coastline and that rock over there. And we continue. We've got the hills there. I guess we're supposed to be crossing right over them. Judging from what the thing, the GPS track is saying. But, uh, looking here at our traditional compass. We're not too far off from the 124 that we were supposed to be at, so maybe a few degrees off, so I don't feel like I'm... I mean, it, apparently we're going far off, but I don't feel like I'm deviating as much as all that. So, there we are. It'd be nice if they actually gave us a proper stopwatch in here instead of that timer. Something fancy would be nice. They apparently didn't think to put a clock in this particular cockpit. Well, in terms of overall time, we should be about halfway through the flight now. And we're most of the way to Naples. And then after that, it looks like it's a little bit over an hour from Naples to Toronto. Well, with Vesuvius around, Naples should be fairly easy to spot, and I think we're... In fact, I, I think I see Vesuvius right there, to the left, basically. Uh, can you see it there? The sun is still sort of putting a glare on everything, but... Yep, I'm pretty sure that's Vesuvius. So, after we get over Vesuvius, we want to head 95 degrees. To Toronto. Oh, uh, a little bit early, I guess you could say. No, Naples is a little bit further over there. It might take us three minutes. Okay, 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 okay. Yep, descending with this is a more gradual thing, not a uh, thousand feet per minute or anything like that. I'm going a little bit fast here. I feel like that probably ought to be a castle right there, to the left, but I'm not sure. Seems like a good place for a castle, right? And there are plenty of castles around. Nice hill area, cliff. Is that like a soccer field? No, there's, a, there's a track. I, I think that's a track and a field. Right on the on the cliff there. We have that fortress on the hill over there, the star-shaped one. Uh, I think this was supposed to be a castle-like thing to our right, under our right wing now. Definitely a castle over to the left there.
Cape, good port facilities and everything. Let's take a look at Vesuvius before we continue to Toronto. I think it's on our way anyway. The sun angle is definitely helping Vesuvius at the moment. It's looking good. Very ominous, really, in front of us like this. Well, it's already changed to the Taranto leg, so I will reset the watch. And we're expecting about 66 minutes left. It's been an hour and a half for me here. We're basically on time. Okay, we're basically going to hang a left at Vesuvius. And on we go for our final bit of this particular leg of the journey, right? There's three portions of it, but I'll just do this one for now. Sort of would have preferred using the older model. This isn't that much faster. And I feel like that one has more cachet. But the challenge is whatever it is. I, I wonder if it'll properly mark it complete or give me any points. I don't know. Okay, situation update. We're about 14 minutes into this leg and we are crossing the mountains at 6,000 feet. We are probably going as fast as we are allowed to go here. I don't know, the textures on this one could do with some work, like right here. Yeah, I don't think they did the best job on the textures here. I mean, I understand, you know, there's a lot of textures, but... Just flying by a nice little ridge with wind turbines here. They're just right along it. We've passed the mountains and now we're more into rolling hills territory. And 23 minutes into this leg. So about 40 more minutes left. Yeah, the cockpit does look downward. That is handy. Right? Uh, you can see the angle it's uh, sloping downward at that point, so the point of view is sort of aiming at the ground. Make sure you get a good view of things. Oh, I'm going a little bit further south than I was expecting. Well, I see a coastline up ahead. And maybe I should consult a separate map for exactly the layout of Toronto. I have not... I do not recall visiting it in a flight sim before, so... Okay, so it is a curve. We sort of see a curve there. We're headed right for it. Uh, that might be the area. I don't know exactly where the water runway is. We'll have to see. Let's see what they say. Doesn't say anything about the landing spot. Land on the water just off the shore of Toronto. Well, I mean, it does give a little picture. So, I guess we can follow that. Okay, looking at uh, Google Maps, the aerial view, I see exactly what they're indicating as far as where we need to land. So I've got a good idea there. Lungo Mare de Toronto is what we're landing right next to.
we just need to follow the coast along and I know the stretch we'll be landing at well the port over here does not look as good as at Naples but I don't think there's a photogrammetry city or anything like that but I have had trouble landing in water I tend to skip a lot don't I we will see how it goes Okay, we just need to be alongside the heart of the city over here. It's actually right here. But I'm probably going too fast. I don't think there's any spoilers or anything. Just right here is what the image indicated. Well, if it'll slow us down at some point, that'd be great. I'll come around if I have to. I mean, there's no break. Is there an anchor? Can I put an anchor down or something? Well, I'll come around to the spot where we're supposed to be. I don't know if I can zoom out to demonstrate that it is in fact the same spot that they have here. Of course there is a LLBB on the GPS, but... Basically this green area to our right is the green area that they wanted to have us land next to. And then those are the piers up ahead. I'll just cut it here. I don't know how to stop really. <laughs> See, you can sort of tell by that little gardeny area with the paths. Okay, well. Um, nine knots, eight. Did it say anything about how to end the challenge? Land on the water, that's it. Well, okay. Um, uh, let me try and shut off the engine. Okay, what else do I need to do? Well, battery off. How about that? Fuel pump is off. Uh, it's not really... Um, I guess this 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 challenge isn't like autocomplete. Here, I'll turn the battery back on. Oh, I guess we'll have to do the next part. I don't know. The next part is the next leg. This is beyond Toronto. I was hoping that they'd take this as a uh, end point. I guess they don't. I mean, I have, I have video evidence that uh, I got here. Anyway, so I flew the first leg of this particular challenge. We'll see. Now I pick it up in the future. It's got a restart, but it doesn't have a save flight here. Well, I just noticed something unpleasant. Of course, this is the flight I just completed, but when I click here, it doesn't allow me to like continue from here. So, do I have to start over again? Uh, no, actually, this is this is the ending, isn't it? Yeah, this is where I was at Toronto. Now, okay. 
Uh, I can't click back on track because um, that will invalidate something or another. But I'm here, I'm at LLBB. I mean, maybe I can just continue, but I don't know if, it, I mean, it should have figured out that I got here because it already went to LLBB to LECCE, -E, which is the next bit. Hmm, I'm confused. Uh, I, well, it seems like it'll pick us up from LLBB. I'll have to broach this mystery another time. So, well, with that addendum, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.